Just a quick update on the Airy Silk Moths. I made up because um, I've just checked on them and there's five of them have hatched last night. Um, I've been spraying them a couple of times a day, just morning and night. They normally are. This is just a converted laundry basket um, and I just put a black bin bag over and I've sprayed the kitchen towel on the bottom and the inside of the bin bag. I've not directly sprayed the cocoons. I hung the cocoons um, a few weeks ago. I just um, threaded the, a bit of cotton on and then tied it to pipe cleaners that are hooked into the sides. Uh, as you can see, they're absolutely beautiful. There's just one of them got a little bit of a, only a tiny bit of a crimp to its wing at the bottom. That one. Um, but the others all look perfect, really. So I'm going to just leave them a bit longer today and transfer them into a flight cage. And hopefully I'll get some breeding going on and lots of little eggs off them. The death, Death's Head Hawk moths have already been uh, hatching out. I've got a few of them so I've got those to feed. But these don't feed as an adult moth. It's caterpillar time, that's the uh, busy, hectic time. Lovely markings on them. And there is uh, some of the death's heads. Shown you those before. There's lots of pupae still to hatch. Just spray them. I don't normally spray them directly, so I put a um, towel on this side. I'll show you how they jiggle. The ones that are darkest are ready to hatch, to emerge. They go a really almost black colour. I normally have them in a, an emerging cage separate from the flight cage but again I'm a bit stuck for room and my other flight cage and that has the airy salt moth in of course. Right okay I'm ready to transfer them. I've prepared the flight cage. Um. <laughs> oh, it's just peed on me. <laughs> they do squirt liquid on you when they become a bit alarmed. Just like the Death's Head's heart moths do. Just trying to get it to step up onto my finger. Mm. Done. Well, they are quite a big species. Um, I've put the eucalyptus branches. It's just what I had at hand here. Um. They are known to lay the eggs on just brown paper and on the sides of the enclosure. Um, I've put a <laughs> this is a piece that broke off my vertical blind and I thought that's ideal for them really to lay the eggs on. 
um, because of the texture of, of it and it's good for them to cling to as well if they need to so I've just hung that in um, might have to put the phone down a minute while I'll get it off my finger um, just put paper towels at the bottom you can use uh, just a tea towel old towel or whatever I've dampened it just to encourage them, uh, make it humid and encourage them to breed. Uh, this flight cage, I don't know if I've shown this one before. <laughs> it's, it's just a wooden frame made with uh, some old neck curtains. And because it wasn't very pleasing to the eye, I did try and stain it with tea and coffee. But... As usual, anything that you want to stain doesn't. I soaked it for hours and hours. The only reason it's got bits of brown on it is because I've had death's head heart moths in there before and they've stained it with um, the fluid that comes out of the cocoons. Right, so I'm going to put it, I don't know if it's male or female. see through the uh, phone lens and there we go I think it's female she didn't want to let me go of my finger <laughs> right, so I'll put the rest of them in see the big feathery antennae I love those bits so cute <laughs> It was going to fall off my finger now. I find these silk moths aren't quite as active as the death's head hawk moths. They tend to just kind of flap about rather than have an actual flight. This one squirted liquid on me as well. Three more to go. Right, I changed my mind about two things. <laughs> the first one that I got, uh, got out, um, I had a second look and after uh, comparing it to the others, I think that one was actually a male. I'll have to check the actual cocoons. Uh, with the Atticus Atlas moths, it was really easy to tell. Well, I'm just struggling with this one a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think um, it may be a male to four females up to now, but I am going to check the cocoons. Uh, another thing that I changed my mind on was to uh, put the branch of eucalyptus in, um, because they have got delicate wings and they get pretty battered just against the sides of the enclosure, never mind having a quite a spiky twig in there as well, so... Um, I thought, well, the the netting's enough for them to cling to. It's better that they've got um, more space to just fly around freely in. So there they are. I'm going to pick the cocoons out now and just double check I'm right with my sexing. It's quite surprising what a small hole they can actually exit the uh, cocoon out of. I mean, if you saw the size of the moth on my hand. Um, that's what size hole it's uh, managed to squeeze through. The liquid that they secrete actually helps to just break down the pupae and the cocoons inside and uh, kind of becomes fluffy on the end of the outer cocoon 
a bit like a bulrush shoot. Um, if you've seen a, an old bulrush that's started to turn inside out, and um, looks a bit like that. See, as you can see, the actual pupae is inside the outer cocoon. Um, like the hawk moths just have the pupae buried down into soil or substrate of some kind. Um, as the silk moths spin this extra layer, and it, I don't know if you can actually see. Um, this outer cocoon is actually made up of multiple layers. I don't know if it's showing you clearly. No, I'd say there's at least three layers there, so and they must build it up. And it's actually quite smooth on the inside. Um Sorry about the blurriness. This is why I normally use my camera because the phone doesn't focus very well. Um, I'm having to actually use a magnifying glass to, <laughs> um, to look at sex in them. These pupae are actually extremely thin, I, I find, compared to the other kinds of moths that I've had before. They're very paper thin. Right, so I was correct in my sex in them in the end after my initial uh, mistake. Um, I can see them better now, I've got a flashlight on them. Let's see if I can show you. Mm, the magnifying glass needs a bit of a clean. My eyes are not so good these days. In fact, the other night, I woke up and just for about five seconds, I was actually blind in one eye. Don't know what that's all about. Not nice. <laughs> um, right, so they're just the same anyway, as I've shown in a video in the past, the Death's Head Hawk Moths. Um, where the female and Atticus atlas moths, where the female has a V shape. It's very slight in these ones. See this one here, right at the bottom, female. Or the female above that. Where did I find the male now? Uh, this is the male. I hope you can see the difference there. Male. Female when it decides to focus. Come on. I don't know. Anyway, you get the gist. Um, if you look at my sexy moths video, you can see it very clearly on those anyway. So yeah, uh, I've got one male as a monopoly on four females at the minute. So he's got no excuse. <laughs> and I'll uh, keep you posted about whether they do breed or not. Um, I'm going to put black bin bag over the flight cage as well just keep it more humid in there and hopefully I'll have more of them hatching out tonight and thanks for watching